Hi, this is Annette with a bit of an overview of some work I've done looking at different business performance frameworks um, aiming to show how the open standards and its systems are a means to the ends which is business performance um, demonstrating that open standards fits within some of these hopefully as a way to help communicate to business leaders some of the benefits of using the open standards. If you want to explore them in more detail there's a document defining each of these but I'll focus in on one called the performance imperative. It's got a fair bit of favour right now. It's been around for about five years. Um, it was developed by some people from uh, a range of organisations, uh, venture, venture Philanthropy Partners, Bridgespan, a consulting group, um, GuideStar, a charity ratings agency, and a whole bunch of business leaders that collectively compile, call themselves the ambassadors community. Um, there's now quite a long list of CEOs from social sector organisations and consultancies and philanthropy groups that have signed up to this performance imperative, um, seeing it as a, a good um, foundation document for helping organisations assess where their performance is and, and how they might improve it. Um, interestingly, I can't see any signatories from the conservation space into this just yet. Um, the whole uh, philosophy is targeted very much at business leaders um, and it's all around guiding them on, on how they might go on a journey to make their performance better, um, particularly focusing in on, on boards and senior executives as well as some funders who are um, looking to improve performance. It takes quite a broad view. Um, it firstly defines what high performance is. Um, it very much focuses in on leadership and in all our open standards work we've recognised the need to, to get involvement from leaders in, in this approach so this is one way of doing that. Um, and while the open standards is pretty much focused in on the execution side of things and things like decision making, um, this performance imperative is, is a much more broader organisational wide view but it positions the open standards quite nicely within that framework. So what is it? Um, they Firstly they define high performance as the ability to deliver over a long period of time meaningful, measurable and sustainable results uh, for the cause of the organisation. So um, it's hitting on a lot of what open standards is trying to talk about being results-based measurement, uh, re results-based management. It goes on to define seven pillars, just splitting up an organisation into these seven um, aspects and it starts with, with leadership very much focusing in on that um, and talks about uh, the people management side, the execution of programs, the financial well-being, um, a learning culture, monitoring and then external evaluation, so all things that are fairly familiar to open standards concepts. Each of those seven pillars has a, um, a whole bunch of characteristics defined behind it, things like clear metrics, um, frequent reporting, measurement as part of an organisation's DNA, um, all that stuff that's pretty familiar to us. What I've done is taken all of these characteristics and tried to just map on where the open standards helps to achieve those particular characteristics, so trying to translate the business speak um, and the open standard speak and um, putting them side by side so that hopefully it can help people communicate how these two things can fit together. So some examples, um, talking about the second pillar around people focused management, it's, it mentions clear work plans, decisions that are data informed, these are all standard open standards concepts. Um, in terms of program design pillar three, it's around having a theory of change um, and managing the implementation of those programs, so open standard stuff again. In the financial sustainability it particularly talks around budgets that are oriented to results and not just activities, so again that's work plans designed around results chains, not just a list of what's going to be done but what the results are that we're trying to, we're trying to do through that work. Um, creating a learning culture which is all around that open standards part five, um, making measurement just part of the, the normal way of operating, so the whole monitoring plan and producing frequent reports to know how that works going. And then um, internal monitoring but also external evaluations at times to, to support the findings of that work. So they're all pretty standard open standards concepts. Um, in looking through all the details 
by my analysis, over half of the characteristics that are defined in the performance imperative are actually supported by open standards products, so information coming through use of the open standards. So it's a pretty clear alignment, a pretty good alignment. So I think that's worth a look for folks who are trying to build some internal support for using the open standards within their organisation. It provides a nice business perspective on it all.